The 33-year-old and husband Edo Mopelimotsi welcomed their first child together earlier this month, with a young girl becoming the latest royal baby in the firm. The announcement was made by Buckingham Palace, who said the child was born on September 18, with both mother and parents safe. It noted the baby weighed 6 pounds 2 ounces and was born at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. The newest Windsor means that Princess Beatrice's grandmother, the Queen, now has 12 great-grandchildren, and that the baby is 11th in line to the throne. Delivering her own update on social media, Beatrice added, So delighted to share the news of the safe arrival of our daughter on Saturday 18th of September 2021, at 23.42, at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, London. Thank you to the midwife team and everyone at the hospital for their wonderful care. It means Beatrice, and her sister Princess Eugenie, both gave birth to girls in 2021, alongside other royal babies born into the family by Zara Tyndall and Meghan Markle. And while Beatrice is enjoying a huge surge of support, in what has been a life-changing 18 months for the royal who married Edo last year, she once spoke of her struggles in balancing her private and public life. She also discussed how it had affected Eugenie. Beatrice said, It TMS hard to navigate situations like these because there is no precedent, there is no protocol. We are the first, we are young women trying to build careers and have personal lives, and we TM re also princesses and doing all of this in the public eye. Eugenie also said that the sisters found coping with the intense media spotlight challenging. They TM they had their fair share of terrible media interest, and it makes us stronger. We believe very strongly in who we are, and the support system of our friends and our family is pretty incredible. There's no point being angry with anyone for beating us up we just need to shine light, and love in the world. Yet throughout their struggles, both Eugenie and Beatrice have remained rocks for one another, perhaps most strikingly shown by their decision to choose one another as their maid of honor. Eugenie added, there was a horrible article that had been written about Beatrice and she got really upset. We were just about to step out and she had a bit of a wobble and cried. I was looking after her. And then about an hour later, I had a wobble and started crying and B was there for me. Around three years ago Beatrice and Eugenie delivered a joint speech on stage at We Day Festival to highlight bullying. Beatrice said, there will be too many moments on this stage today where you will hear stories of bullying. I don't EMT believe that there are many things in life that can make you feel more vulnerable, more helpless, more alone, than being bullied. It comes in many many forms. We TM they all suffered our fair share along the way. Growing up in the public eye means every embarrassing, slightly awkward growth spurt, or hilarious fashion moment, is published around the world. Together we have laughed, together we have cried. Ultimately though, together we fueled each other TMS as of humor. When stones are being thrown, we reassure each other that people don TMT often understand how hurtful they can be. This especially in the world we live in today. Queen will be joined at the Balmoral Estate by her son and heir Prince Charles next week to mark the beginning of the planting season, coinciding with the official launch of the Queen's Green Canopy, QGC. This nationwide initiative, announced in May, is inviting people to plant a tree for the Jubilee from next month and throughout next year. The goal of the QGC is to create a lasting legacy through a network of trees planted in the Sovereign's name in tribute to the record-breaking Queen, celebrating in 2022 her 70th year on the throne. Prince Charles is the patron of this initiative. On the day of the engagement, mother and son will gather with pupils and staff from the nearby Crathy Primary School at the Cricket Pavilion on Her Majesty's Scottish Estate. There, the students will be involved in a variety of outdoor activities as part of their QGC Junior Forester Award, offered by the Royal Forestry Society and the Scottish Forestry Society to deepen children's knowledge of the benefit of trees and plants to the environment. At the end of their session, the Queen and Prince Charles will officially mark the beginning of the QGC initiative by planting a copper beech tree. 
They will later pose with the school children for a group photograph to be added to the QGC's interactive map. This map is a digital record of the green canopy of tree planting projects taking place across the UK in celebration of the upcoming Jubilee. While this tree will be planted to mark the official beginning of the initiative, the first pin to the map has already been added earlier this year, following the announcement of the initiative. Then, Prince Charles and the Queen had met on the grounds of Windsor Great Park to plant a Verdun Oak. The QGC has taken centre stage this year at the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, where its flagship garden paid tribute to the initiative. David Dodd, the designer of the RHS Queen TMS Green Canopy Garden, told Telegraph Gardening, Her Majesty has planted more than 1,500 trees across the world during her reign and the royal family strongly advocate the importance of trees as a way of helping preserve our environment. I have built many gardens at RHS Chelsea but this is the first one I have designed and I am so passionate about the message of the garden. I really hope it encourages everyone across the country to get involved in tree planting. Schools, as well as community groups, individuals and families, are invited by the QGC to plant trees between next month and March next year, to optimize the chance of trees surviving and flourishing. The Queen hasn't been seen in public since August 9th, when she was officially welcomed to Balmoral Castle, with a ceremony taking place on its grounds. But her summer break had started a few days earlier, on July 23rd. While on her summer break, the Queen was visited by members of her family and had the chance to take a break from royal visits. However, she carried on with her daily duties as a sovereign, including receiving the government's red box. During her stay at Balmoral, the monarch also hosted Prime Minister Boris Johnson for a weekend. And she carried out a private investiture ceremony, as recorded in the court circular last week. After their joint engagement on Friday, the Queen and Prince Charles will attend together the opening of the Scottish Parliament next Saturday also joined by Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. Later next month, the Queen will also attend the opening of the Welsh Senedd, this time with her youngest son Prince Edward. And she is due to return to Scotland in early November, when she will attend the COP26 Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. James, who is Kate TMS' younger brother, married Alizé on September 11 in Bournes les Mimosas a notoriously beautiful French village in the Côte d'Etm Azur. Attending the event were the couple's trademark closest friends and family, including Kate and Prince William and their three children. Other family members in attendance were James' trademark sister Pippa and her husband James Matthews, along with their children Arthur and Grace as well as parents Michael and Carol Middleton. Following a ceremony at the town hall, the couple reportedly held a beachside reception in Mediterranean restaurant Café Leyub. The flower girls were the couple TMS dogs Ella and Mabel who were given the role of welcoming each guest as they arrived. Ella in particular, played a key role in the couple TMS first meeting in 2018 according to royal expert Zoe Forsey. Pod Save the Queen is hosted by Anne Gripper and features the Daily Mirror TMS Sarah Bradbury, Russell Myers and Ms. Forsey. On James and Alizy TMS awkward first meeting Ms. Forsey claimed, you mention their love for dogs already and it was actually a bit of a chance encounter they met, all thanks to their dogs. James had taken Ella out to a very fancy private members club in West London. Ella was sitting at James' trademark feet behaving herself but she went over to have a drink of water. On the way she was distracted by a very beautiful blonde woman who was sitting in the corner of the bar. It was also quite a weird moment because when James went over to apologize Alizy actually thought he was a waiter and just ordered a drink. Ms. Forsey jokingly added, she can TMT be accused of fancying him just because of the family ties. James and Alizy were engaged in September 2019 but postponed their wedding twice because of the coronavirus pandemic. For the day itself Alizy, who is a financial analyst, borrowed her wedding gown off mother-in-law Carol. The bride, who stayed with the Middleton TMS in Bucklebury, Berkshire, at the height of the pandemic, fell in love with the gown when she tried it on during lockdown. She told hello? 
magazine, it fitted me perfectly and was exactly what I wanted. It always troubled me that wedding dresses are worn once and so it was amazing to give such a beautiful dress a second lease of life. Alizy added, my something borrowed was in fact my dress from my mother-in-law Carol, who last wore it on her wedding day in June 1980. While talking about dresses with Carol and sharing ideas during lockdown for inspiration, I tried on her wedding dress and fell in love with it. James, who is an entrepreneur, has spoken out in the past about his frustration and being compared to his royal older sister Kate. When asked by Type magazine in 2015 if he found it irritating that his projects were frequently overshadowed by Kate TMS status, he replied, yes, it does get frustrating. I work incredibly hard like any other person in business and work. And aside from the fact of, yes, I am the brother of someone very important, I am at the end of the day, just James. Listen to Pod Save the Queen on all podcast platforms.